Hey, good morning, Amigas. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. Uh, dish wars results today. So we're going to be doing uh, stuffed and rolled turkey breast uh, with some homemade stuffing. Uh, we're going to do herb. A little bit of cranberry in there as well. So we're going to stuff that, roll it, tie it, and we're going to roast that bad boy off. Uh, and we're also going to do uh, roast potatoes, um, some lovely sprouts. Uh, we've also got, what else we got? Carrots, broccoli. And I think some uh, homemade gravy as well. So we've got the bone, uh, which is left on, uh, I think, the wing. So we're going to roast that off as well. We're going to make a stop for the gravy. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So uh, Dish Wars results for, for uh, last week. So I uh, hope you guys and gals are going to enjoy it. It's good to see you. I'm going to make the stuffing first because um, if I get the turkey out, then start uh, butterflying it, opening it up. And then I've got to make the stuffing, right? So when it comes to... <clears throat> To stuffings. I'm actually using old stale bread. This is a sourdough bread from about a week ago. It's still okay. Make sure you check it. There's no mold on it. Make sure it's all hunky dory. It's all fine. Yeah, it seems okay. But it's just stale, which is good. I mean, it's not that stale. It still feels pretty, pretty soft, to be honest with you. But stale bread is good for breadcrumbs. Uh, very good for breadcrumbs and great for stuffings. So we're going to use this up. So we're just going to break this down. Grab a little cheeky bit of thyme, so a little bit of old thyme, that's fine. So all we need to do is just basically take the leaves off, <clears throat> just drop them straight in. You don't want the stalk, no, nobody wants to chew on that. It's, it's just very, not very nice, is it? And you don't want to be sifting through it, you'll be there for ages. So the best way to do it, to get all the flavor uh, from the thyme, you just pick the leaves off and then you can just drop them in. So and you just want to do, basically grab your thumb and index finger don't, carefully don't pull too hard and then just gently pull them off and they should all, most of them, should come all, all come off and you can just drop them in. So we're going to just take a few sprigs of this, probably not going to use the entire packet. A little cheeky bit of sage. Sazi, thank you for the host as well. Appreciate it. So I'm just going to pick these down. You only want on this sage <clears throat> is pretty much the leaves. Now you don't want a huge deal of sage because uh, it's quite a quite a strong predominant kind of herb or flavor. So um, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. That's a little stingy, chef. But it is quite strong. Don't go crazy like using the entire packet or something like that. So I feel like that should be enough. So I'm just going to chop this up very, very quickly. Just a quick little dice. It doesn't need to be so, so fine because it's going to get blended up anyway. But if you chuck the whole leaves in there, it might not get blended up properly. So just make sure we get the job done correctly, shall we? Right. Don't want to go too crazy on the rosemary. Just a little sprig of like that. Uh, make sure you take off the the stalk. So I'm just going to chop this down very gently without it flying everywhere. Usually flies all over the place when you cut this. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> so just chopping it down, just roughly. It doesn't have to be so like super fine. And then just a little cheeky touch of parsley as well. And like this, like the other herbs, we're just going to go over it once. Nothing too crazy. So we want about half here, so which is about roughly 50 grams. You don't need a huge deal, so 40 to 50 grams you need. So I'm just going to chop this up very nicely. Do little cheeky little cubes. So give this a blend. Careful you don't overblend it as well. Super, super important you don't overblend it. If you overblend it, you'll end up with like a stodgy ball, uh, and it will. But by the time you cook it, it'll be just too just stodgy, pretty much. So, and if you're going to say, how far do you take it? I'm going to show you now. There we go. So, as you can see, the, when you're blending it, right, it's actually starting to fold in on itself. It's starting to, starting to bind together. So, as you can see, like, look, it's pretty much starting to bind together nicely. So, that's when you want to stop doing it. If you take it any further, it'll, it'll pretty much, you'll over blend it. It'll turn really stodgy. So um, you want to take it off when it's just about there, when it's starting to bind. So perfect. So I'd say a good, good handful should be plenty. Maybe a little touch more. There we go. So we're just going to kind of just generally just kind of quickly just chop them up. Nothing too super fine. Um, so they can be a little bit chewy to, to chop. So just work your way through them. So we're going to pop them into the stuffing. Give them an absolute beautiful mix. Make sure this is all kind of mixed really well through. So there we go. There's our herb stuffing and cram cranberry and herb stuffing, pretty much. So that's good to go. Um, the rib cage. So we're going to take that off. 
Um, so what we're going to do, we're just going to carefully cut around this, and we can use this bone, right, for the um, for the stock. So let's have a look. So you just basically want to follow the bone around very carefully. So we're just going to peer this open. And just cutting against the bone as best as possible so you don't lose any meat. So you're just basically just cutting it away, making sure you're just peering that beautiful bone. You're just following it all the way around, and there's like a little cheeky knuckle here as well. So I'm just going to follow that round. Just being very, very careful, making sure you don't lose any of that beautiful, beautiful meat for the breast. So this is perfect. So we can make the gravy out of this bone. There we go. Look at that. There you go. So there's the that's the inside of the carcass, and obviously the breast was on the outside. So uh, we've taken that off. So we're going to leave that aside. We're going to roast that off. We're going to pop it onto a tray. So I'll do that now. And there's our beautiful, beautiful uh, turkey breast. So I'm just going to open that up. Beautiful. And what we're going to do? Just carefully open this up, pretty much like a book. So we're just kind of butterflying this beautiful breast open. So turkey bone, it's going on the uh, tray. It's going to go into the oven. Um, I'm going to roast this off. So I'm going to make a small amount of gravy, nothing too crazy. Um, and then we're going to get some vegetables, some herbs, some flavors. So I'm just going to put that in the oven. It's on 180 Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit. Um, so we're going to let that roast off for about a good hour. So by the time I finish rolling that, that should be about just about ready. Right, so there's our cranberry and herb stuffing. So I'm just going to pop that straight into here. Just spread it out nice and evenly over the uh, turkey butterfly. Or turkey breast butterfly, shall I say. So let's roll this up really nicely. Usually your th first four is the right four. So there we go. That's it. So that's what we want because we've got the skin there. And we can seal that really nicely, um, and that's good to go. So I'm just going to try and stuff some of that back in. Okay, so what we want to do, start on the bottom end. I'm just going to tie it. Nice and tight. Not too, too tight, but just so it holds together. I'll trim these off in a bit. Let me just get this all tied first. So let me tuck that under there. Perfect. Don't really want to move it too much, so I'm just kind of shuffling it along. There we go. Magic. So there's our stuffed and rolled turkey ready to go. So we're going to sear it later on. I'm just going to pop it onto a plate, ready to rock and roll. I'm going to try and get some of this stuffing back in. Uh, so we had herb and cranberry stuffing in there. So um, we, we just literally made first thing so very very nice indeed come on in you go <laughs> stuff in the turkey alrighty I need two sticks of celery I'm gonna give these a wash because these are very soily uh, I'm gonna use a heel on my hand uh, make sure the blade is not up make sure it's like kind of near enough pointing horizontally so you don't stab yourself or you don't blunt the blade so there you go just crush it and it should just come off or you could do with hitting it a little touch harder than that. So, like so. There we go. Perfect. So just kind of crushing these up just lightly. Not going too crazy. I know I said I want two garlic cloves, but there was two stuck inside each of other. So technically two good size. <laughs> just going to take the tops off and the bottoms. Not too, too much. And I'm just going to chop, chop these up. Now, I usually don't like the textures of these because it's going to be a stock. It's not going to make any difference whatsoever. So we're just going to very finely, uh, not finely, just roughly chop these up very nicely. Um, usually with carrot skins, you usually find quite a bitterness from them. So uh, when you're making stocks, so um, I usually take them off, personal preference. Um, but if you want to leave them on, that's fine. But I feel like you get a better stock by taking them off. Large pan's going on to a medium heat. A tablespoon of vegetable oil, which we're going to pop in here. We don't need a huge deal. So just a bit. We don't want it too oily. But we're going to get those uh, onions, uh, the mirepoix, sorry, uh, roasted off or uh, caramelized off, sorry, in the pan. And uh, we're going to add this now once it's nice and hot so we can get that nice little kind of saute going off, going on and then start caramelize those beautiful vegetables. So let's chuck them straight in. There we go. There's that beautiful sizzle. 
Whoa! We lost a carrot. There he is. So, let's cook this down very nicely. Right, I'm going to take this off a little bit because it's nicely caramelizing perfectly. So we don't want to go and caramelize them too much. Um, I'm going to just take the bone out now because that's nice and golden. Beautiful flavor in it. Look at it. That's what we want. Let's turn that oven off now because we don't need that on. Perfect. So look at that. Nice, beautiful, golden turkey bone ready to go. Also got a little bit of uh, pond or f uh, I call it sediment, but you know, we all have our terminologies. Um, so you can use that. So this is going to go into the into the stock now. I'm going to top it up with a touch of water. I'd say about a liter and a half. The thousand five hundred mil should be plenty, or thousand two fifty, round about that. <coughs> Excuse me. So you don't need to go too bonkers with this. And if you want to take it a step further, I suppose you could even top it up with chicken stock a little bit. Um, you know, whatever you takes your fancy. But water will be fine. But uh, anyway, we're going to put this onto a simmer. Once it's simmering, we're going to turn it right down to a low heat uh, and just let that do its magic. So that should be good to go. Top and tail. Beautiful parsnips. If you've never had parsnips before, very delicious. Very nice. Uh, sweet and earthy kind of flavor. Uh, has a kind of own taste, its own taste, but uh, goes very well with kind of sweet flavors as well. So um, very good with like honey glazed parsnips. I'm not going to lie though, for my own personal preference, I'm not a huge fan of honey honey glazed parsnips it's too sweet for me but um if you like them go for it i just like mine plainly roast maybe with a few uh few herbs and, and whatnot in there bit of oil simple but yet delicious so i'm just gonna peel these down um so let's cut these down now when it comes to parsnips um i do prefer taking out the the core uh reason for it they're quite uh bitty and kind of fibrous um so i usually take them out and then just kind of cut them into like nice little chip fingers. Let me pop these into a pan, um, and then we're going to boil these off and soften these up very nicely. So give me two seconds. We're only going to part boil these, so we're going to cook these down for, um, I would say, just about between 10 to 15 minutes. You don't want to fully cook them through, so they're on the stove there, and they're going to cook down very, very nicely. Um, quick little scrub. If they're really soily, just get yourself a clean sponge and just give it a really like good scrub over or under cold water. So I'm going to go do that now. Uh, so bear with me a couple of seconds. All right, so let's peel these down. I'm going to get a little cheeky pan out. So with the garlic butter we're going to add to this mash, I'm going to actually kind of um, reduce down a bit of milk, crush uh, with some grated garlic and some butter. And then we kind of kind of almost like kind of cook out the garlic because when you add raw garlic to something, it's not very pleasant, uh, in my personal opinion, in large amounts. So if you're going to add raw garlic, always do like very, very small amount. But I'm actually going to cook a little bit out, so I'm going to do like one clove in there and just let it simmer so we can just kind of mild it down. Or you could even roast them, I guess. You know, those are the options. But sometimes if you add too much raw garlic, sometimes you'll get like a burning sensation. Uh, it's just not pleasant. So go very easily if you're not going to cook it out, just like using like half a clove or something like that. Roast potatoes. So I want some good size kind of roast potatoes. Uh, just cut this in half as well. So you want them roughly about the same size. So these ones, these are going to be a little bit smaller. Um, obviously, the smaller you, cu you cut your potatoes, uh, obviously the quicker it's going to cook, obviously. But bearing in mind, make sure you do cut them uh, about the same size so they cook all nice and evenly. There we go. So here's our mash. There's our roasties. So they're, gonna, they're larger than the other ones, so... Um, obviously these are going to be mashed down, so we're going to cover these with water, a bit of salt in both, and we're going to pop these onto the stove. Now when it comes to boiling the potatoes, now obviously I'm talking about the roast potatoes, you don't want to boil them down to mash like these bad boys. You want to kind of cook them down where they're still holding their shape, but they are soft. And if you put enough pressure through it, you're going to break it. So um, once they're boiling, they're going to take about, I would say, about 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then we're going to take them off and drain them off. So these parsnips are done, so actually I'll tell you what I will do. Just take that off. We're going to drain them. Right, top and tail. Perfect. Uh, we're going to peel these down, obviously. Right, so I'm just going to cut these down. Nothing fancy. So what I'm doing is basically uh, taking the tops off and cutting the bottoms or the roots. Now, what are you doing that for, Chef? Why are you doing the crisscross on it? The reason for it, if you just cooked a sprout as it was, uh, basically the tops would overcook and the bottom of the roots, because they're quite thick and tough, uh, wouldn't cook the same time. So by actually doing a crisscross uh, in the bottom, you're actually exposing that root 
and it's actually going to cook nice and evenly. So hence why we uh, crisscross the bottoms. So all we want to do is just floret these. So as you saw, I took the, the root off. Um, and I'm just going to cut through the stem. Right, so there's our beautiful softened parsnips ready to go. Um, I'm just going to oil these up. Also going to add a little touch of garlic in here. Maybe some thyme as well. Uh, maybe a little touch of rosemary instead. I don't know. We'll see. We'll a bit of both. So we're just going to make a nice little kind of um, little mixture here where we're going to cook out the garlic. Um, just reduce the milk and the butter and just make a nice little solution ready for our mashing our potatoes. Okay, let's chop this up into little little cubes. If you're going to ask me how much is here, I'd say about 140, 150 gram of butter. So I'm just going to peel this down, just take off the skin, and then we're going to grate it through the uh, microplane I've got right there. Just a good splash in there. It's a bit more than a splash, I know. So we're talking about three, 400 mil in there. Right, so this is on a medium high. So let's get this nice and hot, add a little touch of oil to it, uh, ready to um, sear off and brown that beautiful turkey. We're also going to season it as well. So I'm not going too crazy with this. It's going to be an absolute great gravy, as, as you guys and gals can see. Look at that. Look at all that beautiful depth, the flavor, the color. Um, absolutely fantastic. So it's looking really, really good. So let's pour that in here. I'm not going to go too crazy with the pepper. Just, you know, just a little smidge there. Good pinch of salt. Just kind of want to stay on that skin. It will probably kind of fall off, especially with the flake salt. So here we go. Just going to carefully just pop that in. Making sure we got some of that oil in there, it doesn't burn. There we go. So. We're going to baste it, obviously. Maybe I can put butter in halfway through or when it's almost done, and then we can baste it a little bit, which will be nice. So that's ready to go in the oven. I'm going to pop that straight in. Um, I'm going to start uh, pulling those potatoes out because they're going to start mashing before long if I don't. So this is going in. It's going to be about roughly an hour. Also needs about 20, 30 minutes to rest, so... That's plenty of time. Okay, they, yeah, these potatoes are done. Perfect. So, I'm just going to take these off. So, you basically got nice... Can you see all that fluffiness going around the potato? That'll give it that nice, beautiful crispness uh, in your potato. So, just give it a nice little shake. And it'll fluff up really nicely. Don't go too hard and it'll break in half and whatnot. So, right, a little touch of rosemary. Just going to kind of rip and tear this. Just going over the top. Right, a little touch of thyme as well duck fat that I had left over from that rendered duck fat from the other week. Garlic flavor in there. Fantastic. Um, and I need a little bit of seasoning. Let me wash my hands because of garlic. Let's give this a nice little coating in the oil. But these are these are perfect for roasting, so that's what you want. Low heat. Uh, we want to melt the butter, so we're going to start making the roux for the gravy. Once that's all melted down, we're going to add the flour, make the roux. Uh, if you want to look for grams, about 80 grams of flour to 60 grams of butter. Uh, just a little bit more than the butter. There we go. Okay. So we've got that nice little sandy texture roux. Uh, so that's going to cook out for roughly about 30 seconds to a minute. Just to kind of make a start on cooking out that flour. A good mm, teaspoon and a half of Marmite. If you've never tried Marmite before, it makes absolutely excellent stocks and gravies and sauces. Because it's got that beautiful umami kind of flavor to it. So... Going in for this uh, kind of gravy is going to be fantastic, so we're going to be adding to it. I'm going to start ladling in that beautiful turkey stock that we made. Now don't go add in lots and lots and lots, because if you do that, you're going to end up with lumps in your gravy. It's going to be a right mess. Add it little by little. Be patient with it. Let the flour absorb that liquid, uh, and you'll end up with a nice silky smooth gravy and a good consistency. So. There we go, all the liquid's gone. Let's add some more. Beautiful. Right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch these over because that is pretty much ready to rock and roll. Um, so what I'm gonna do, turn this one up to a high heat, turn that one down. And we're also gonna get a pan of water on to, to boil. Ready. So I'm gonna swap these over. So I need to finish off, get my mash ready. And then we're gonna start getting the, pretty much getting the, um, the vegetables done and ready to rock and roll. So uh, this is pretty much looking good. Our garlic butter and milk for our mashed potato. Um, I'm actually going to add a little touch of butter to it before I do. 
Um, so then we can baste it when it comes out, when it when it's halfway through. So we can baste it really nicely. So just a little knob of butter, not too much. The only reason I didn't put it in to begin with, uh, because obviously butter, uh, the milk solids would burn, and uh, by the time it was done, it, you'd have like a black solution at the bottom, which you don't want. So halfway through, that's fantastic. Alrighty, those potatoes are looking great. I think they're about done. I'm going to drain them off. Uh, and we're also going to mash them up. So when it comes to bash, uh, mashing the potatoes from obviously boiling, you've got to drain them off. But also, don't forget, put them back into the pan uh, and then pa back onto the stove so they dry up really nicely. So, right, so I'm just going to drop these straight in. Drop a bit more of that in there. <laughs> Look at how smooth that is. That's like super smooth. Keeping this bad boy nice and moist. Okay, so let's take that out. That's looking great. So I'm just going to give this a nice little base. It's going to have a nice little rest. Right, I feel like these are done. So... These are looking so good, guys. Look at these. Let's Instagram these little bad boys. Uh, we need to take off the uh, the ties. So. <laughs> That'll do. There we go. So I'll just steam up very, very quickly. Oh my goodness me. Oh my gosh, so moist. Look at that. Absolutely divine. So, so good. Oh. Oh my goodness me. Look at it. Those beautiful roasted potatoes. So let's get our beautiful meat on there as well. Fantastic. Super good. We're not going to put too much on there to begin with. <laughs> I say to begin with, right? Goodness me. Beautiful. Put some of these on here. A few little, little cheeky sprouts as well. Fun. Sounds like great fun, my friend. I don't want to cover this too much because I want to see uh, all those beautiful flavors going on. So there it is, our delicious stuffed and rolled turkey dinner, um, which was won by last week on the Dish Wars. So um, stuffed and rolled turkey breast with a cranberry and herb stuffing. Uh, butterflied it, stuffed it, rolled it, tied it, uh, roasted halfway through butter, basted, super tender, super juicy, full of flavor. M what more do you want? Roasted potatoes, part boiled, drained, fluffed up, and then using a bit of duck fat, oil, herbs, garlic, roasted very nicely for about nearly an hour. 180, 350 Fahrenheit. Um, also, roasted parsnips, just the pelt got there in the end. Um, boiled and roasted, bit of oil, salt, pepper, bit of herbs, good to go. The garlic creamy mash, I know it's two potatoes, but that garlic creamy mash, oh my goodness me. Uh, boiled down, dried out, mashed, riced, and then mashed, and then the butter, garlic, and milk solution that we reduced, put into it, super creamy, and the veggies, carrots, broccoli, sprouts, don't really need much explanation, cooked in a bit of chicken stock, salt, uh, ready to rock and roll, and obviously the homemade gravy, we made with the bone from the breast of the turkey, uh, making a home turkey stock, then making a roux, Using that turkey stock to make the base. Bit of marmite in there. Salt. Um, just slowly cooking down for a few hours. Developing its beautiful flavor. So, so good. So delicious. So, uh, looking forward to this. Guys, have a great rest of your uh, cheeky Wednesday. I'll be back tomorrow, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, for some more delicious noms with those two different lasagnas uh, ready for my wife's school. So, have a great rest of your day. Much love. Thank you for the love and support. And I'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, as always. Guys. Goodbye for now. Appreciate it.